I'm installing vinyl plank flooring. One thing you need to be aware of when you're installing these is that the edges in here, you need to blow these out, especially after you cut them, because if there's any little fragments in here, then they won't stick together very well. I start at an angle and work my way down and make and make sure that these two lines, these two edges line up perfectly. And while I'm doing that I need to make sure, continue to make sure that they they still line up here. And there's usually a little clipping or a popping sound when they pop in. Here's another view. You'll want to keep this line almost exact. This has ridges that fit into these ridges and these ridges need to be extremely clean so I usually blow them out. If there's any little particles in there it won't work very well. So you can work it out from here and then pull it in until it hits here and then just keep moving it back and forth and then moving it down until you've got a good a good uh, connection. Sometimes I lift up the one next to it and make sure that they line up exactly where I need to. Like you can see, make sure that you can see this. If they're over, if this overlays this, then when you hammer it down with the rubber hammer um, then you might end up cracking these boards. So that looks pretty good. And it looks pretty good all the way along the line. Towards the end here you can kind of see that it has a little bit of a gap but when I work it when I jiggle it back and forth it'll eventually go in you want it to not have a very big seam in here while you're working it by hand you don't want to slap this together if you had a big seam and you hit it with the the tools you're going to end up busting up the edges here and then that's another board you have to replace so now that I've got it where I want it to be and there's really no seam in here and this lines up nicely I'll push it down by hand just a little bit and I'll take my hammer and my rubber hammer lightly tap it along here and then I'll go along the entire length to make sure that the seam is gone and then I just work it in by hand and most of the seam will be gone and any residual I'll come back with this tool which you'll need to pick up I couldn't have done this job by hand you need you need a tool like this and you put it in and you give it a little tap but you only need to tap it if there's if you see a little bit of a gap if there's no gap then it's in it's in well some people want to whack it, you don't want to whack it you just want to tap And then it's really important, I've found that I run my finger along here and I want 
there to not really be a transition, a feeling of trans, uh, transition or like it steps up. So if this board is out more than this one, then the net, when you lay your next board you're going to have a problem. So you want to run your, your finger along here and if this is further out, then I'll tap this in just a little bit. And I might have to go back and forth a few times until it lines up where I want it to be. Okay, that's good. In order to keep my lines straight along the floor, I used a chalk string. I didn't actually put the chalk on the floor, I just used the string. You don't you can use any string as long as it's it's tight on both ends because if it's not super tight then you won't be able to see the the shifts in the lines and when you t when you tap these uh planks in it'll shift the entire floor unless it's uh mounted to the side of the room somehow but this is a floated floor so it, it shifts every time I, I tap a new board in and so I often have to go back and recheck the lines so this this room is about 20 feet long just this little bit of tapping with this hammer and this tool would send the floor pushing away and also when you tap these when you use this tool you want to make sure you're not hitting. You want to make sure you're not hitting the uh, material under the top layer. This basically sits in there like so. And I do that before I hit it. This plank has an underlayment, but when I found that I had dips in the floor, I just took pieces of another type of underlayment like this comes in rolls and then I placed it where I needed it to go to fill in the, the uh, drastic dips this floor also has a slope to it and it slopes in some places more so I would try to, f to make the slope as gradual as possible using the underlayment material. So, for example, if I had a slope, drastic slope here and then evened out again, I would take that underlayment material, cut it, and I would shove it under here where I needed to, and then the next plank would go on top. I used a jigsaw to cut the ends when necessary. If this was my mark here, I would take a square, which you definitely need for this type of work. And I would draw my line, and then use my jigsaw. And I would also make sure that my bit was for plastics or vinyls. Anything for wood will end up just chopping this whole thing to pieces. You want something finer. And then after I cut it, I make sure that I clean it very, very well. So if I end up with any junk in here, I got to get it out, even on the ends here. Any little bits will cause problems when you try to install these planks. When moving these boxes to and from the store and inside your your room, you don't want to put the edges of the boxes down like this or like this or like this because you'll end up chipping up the edges of the actual material so when you move these boxes you want to do it as flat as possible such as that because when you put the edges down even if they're in the box you put them down at a corner at an angle, you'll chip up and you'll actually push the material here 
upwards and then you've just ruined the entire board. 